So what happens when you get into a hot environment? What are the mechanisms that allow for the various health effects of that? Well, your shell, your skin, senses that, and through the circuit that I described earlier, activates neurons in the POA, the preoptic area, which in turn activates mechanisms in your autonomic nervous system like vasodilation. So blood flow increases, plasma volume of your blood increases, and stroke volume, the volume of blood that is mobilized with each beat of your heart also increases. And your heart rate increases to anywhere between 100 to 150 beats per minute. That general constellation of effects looks a lot like cardiovascular exercise. And in fact, for all intents and purposes, it really is cardiovascular exercise, except that there isn't the mobilization and the loading of joints and limbs and things of that sort. And of course, there are additional benefits of cardiovascular exercise that relate to impact on the ground, improvements in bone density, et cetera, et cetera. Your vasculature changes shape literally to accommodate those increases in heart rate and blood volume. And you're basically getting a cardiovascular workout in that hot environment, even if you're just sitting down. Shifts in the output of hormones, both from your adrenals and possibly from the testes and ovaries and even within the brain. One of the more striking examples of that comes from a study that was published In 2021, the title of the study is Endocrine Effects of Repeated Hot Thermal Stress and Cold Water Immersion in Young Adult Men. They had these men attend four sauna sessions of 12 minutes each. So again, well within that range of five to 20 minutes, 12 minutes. The temperature of those saunas was 90 to 91 degrees Celsius. So I'll just quickly do the calculation, uh, admittedly not in my head. That's 194 degrees Fahrenheit. Afterwards, they had a six minute cool down break during which they did get into some cool water or cold water of about 10 degrees. And then they measured hormones at various times throughout this study, before, during, and after. They looked at testosterone, they looked at DHEA, which is in the androgen pathway, they looked at prolactin, and they looked at cortisol. The major effect of this study is a significant decrease in cortisol output in these subjects. I think this is really interesting and important because many people suffer from acute, meaning immediate and long-term stress and are looking for ways to control their stress. Controlling your cortisol is tricky, but many people are overworked. They're overstressed. They're, for one reason or another, they're subjected to many too many stressors or their level of stress resilience isn't high enough to keep their cortisol levels clamped at a healthy level. So the protocol I described of 12 minute exposures to 90 degree environment, that's again, 90 degrees Celsius, followed by a six minute cool down break in cool water, 50 degrees or so, that's pretty cold. I can imagine that you could also just take a cool shower or a cold shower afterwards. That had a very significant effect on lowering cortisol. So there you have a tool, it's not a completely zero cost tool because you need to heat the water and you need to have access to hot and cold water, at least hot and cold contrast of some sort. annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.